Hi, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. So far in your sessions, especially the last session, you by now you will have a very good understanding of an income statement, the different ratios in an income statement, and how to analyze an income statement and make really important decisions for a company. Now, the income statement is done. That's it. Now, there is another financial statement that goes hand in hand with an income statement. Almost every time there is a change to an income statement, there is also some other change happening in another, another financial statement. And that statement is the focus of our session today. And that sta statement is called the balance sheet, the balance sheet of accounts. Yeah. To, to help you understand, give you an intuitive feel of a balance sheet, let's go back to our example, this personal expense example. You, you remember back in our first session, I believe we said it's, it's, a, it's, it's a really good habit to keep your own personal statement of accounts where you write down every month what your salary is and how much you're spending. Now that is what you see here, salary of 1 lakh and you've been spending all this money and you, you know, finally save some, uh, you know, 28,000 rupees there. Now, is that it? So my question is, just this statement, does this give you or somebody else a complete financial picture about yourself? Think about it. Look at the statement. Does this statement give your yourself a complete financial situation about you? Is that it? Isn't there anything else in your financial uh, universe that is there other than your revenue and your income? Yeah, not really, right? There are a few other things. Now, for example, okay, your salary is a lakh. You spend all this money. This is the amount of money you've left. Where is that money? That is that money is probably getting added to your bank balance somewhere, right? You have a bank balance, and some of that bank balance you regularly invest in the stock market, or you buy debt, or in a fixed deposit. You have all that happening, right? You and also maybe you you own a house, yeah? Maybe you own a car, you own a cell phone, uh, you, you maybe you have a loan, and you pay a monthly EMI to. There you go, right? You, you have an EMI right here. So that means you have a loan, maybe 15, 20 lakhs to pay back for your house. You have those things as well. So unless an, an income statement gives only a snapshot of a financial, your, your financial situation, an income statement, along with all those other things we just said, what all you own, your, 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 your cash in your bank account, your shares, your stock, and all those things, along with your flat and a car, the amount of money you owe somebody else, only when you see an income statement along with those other assets or liabilities that you own or owe, only then can somebody or you yourself can get the complete financial picture of yourself, right? So this other statement where we're going to put your cash balance and your house and the loan you owe, that is essentially a balance sheet. Now let's look at if you had to build a basic balance sheet for an individual you, what would that look like? Very simply, uh, you have cash in your bank account. Yes, you have cash in your bank account. I'm just going to make this a little bigger so it's uh, easy to read. You have cash in your bank account. Uh, let's say you know, you, you've been saving well. You have 10 lakhs of cash in your bank account. Okay. Uh, does does this does the income statement capture this anywhere? Look at this. No, there's no 10 lakhs here, right? So you have cash in your bank account, and then apart from that, you own stocks worth another 10 lakhs. Okay. Does your personal income statement capture this anywhere? No, right? Then you have some money in a fixed deposit. You know, you're a fairly risky guy. You want to put only little money in a fixed deposit and more money in shares. So you have another five lakhs in a fixed deposit yes now again your income statement does not have any three of these things so you see what a restrictive view of your financial situation your income statement was providing so far now let's let's see uh what else uh we also said maybe you uh you own a flat yeah you own a flat right uh you you, you own a flat 
the cost of that flat is maybe, I don't know, let's say 30 lakhs, you own a flat, uh, 30 lakhs, sorry, that's 3 lakhs, 30 lakhs. You maybe own a, you own a car, you own some assets like you own a car, uh, that's another 5 lakhs, yeah. So these are all the things that you own, that you, you know, you own, you own these things. Otherwise, in corporate finance terms, these are called your assets. These are what you own, these are your assets. Now you also owe money, right? You probably owe, let's say, you owe uh, rent, uh, you owe, you know, not rent, you owe your uh, house loan. You took a ho loan for a house, so you owe a house loan, let's say, a 20 lakh a house loan you owe. You probably also owe this month's rent, maybe, you know, 20,000 rupees of this month's rent. You probably also owe that money. So all these things that you owe other people, that others others have a claim on your income, you have to give this money back to somebody else. Um, that is essentially, you know, essentially what you owe or otherwise in corporate finance lingo, it's called liabilities. Is that clear? Yeah. Assets and liabilities. Huh? So now, the, your total assets, let's calculate what your total assets are. Your total assets are very simple. They're just sum of all your individual assets put together. There you go. You're a rich guy. Or your rich girl, your, your your total assets are sixty lakhs, but not yet. That's not the you don't own that entire money. You also owe people some money. You remember that? So, what are your total liabilities? Your total liabilities is twenty lakhs and twenty thousand. That's your total total liabilities. All right. So now. How much are you really worth? What you're really worth is nothing but your total assets, what you own, and subtract from that how much you have to give to other people as your total li liabilities. So your net worth or how much you're actually worth is your total assets minus your total liabilities. There you go. 39,80,000 is your net worth. This is your own simple balance sheet for your personal purposes. This balance sheet, along with this monthly income statement, gives a complete holistic view almost of your financial situation. Yeah. Similarly, a company's a company has you know a, a company has a simple income statement like this, which uh, we we looked at a few sessions back. Just like in your case, this income statement does not give the entire snapshot of a company this is just one aspect of a company's financial snapshot a company has its own balance sheet and i'm going to draw this side by side so you know there is not a world of difference between like your balance sheet and a company's balance sheet is only little i'm gonna say here i'll just say here i'm gonna say this is your personal balance sheet okay and then we're gonna say this we're gonna roughly look at what is your what is a company's balance sheet all right yeah so hopefully that is intuitive enough to you now similarly just like how you have cash in your account a company we're just gonna make sure this all looks nice and tidy for you to see okay a company also has cash in its bank account. Let's just say the company, it's a, it's a big company, so a company probably has more cash than you do. So a, a company has 50 lakhs in its bank account. A company will not keep all its money in cash in a bank. A company will actually also invest its money into fixed deposits and stocks and things like that, okay? A company has another 50 lakhs in uh, stocks and another 50 lakhs in fixed deposit. And then we also saw this was called assets. Now, when it comes to, since we are getting technical and into this, the kind of assets that are liquid in nature, when I say liquid in nature is either you have the cash already in the bank account 
or you could just sell the stocks or just break your fixed deposit and get your cash immediately. Such assets are called, sorry, current assets. Such assets are called current assets. These are the current assets of a company. Okay, uh, and current assets are nothing but assets that are liquid in nature, either cash or cash equivalents like stocks or fixed deposit that can be sold immediately. Now, apart from these assets, a company also has other assets. Let's say uh, they have machinery, like in case of Domino's Pizza, they have uh, you know ovens and baking trays and all of that. Let's say they have you know uh, machinery worth 30, 30, 45 lakhs. That's 45 lakhs, yes. Then they have some inventory. What is inventory? We saw in our uh, previous example inventory is essentially uh, Domino's or any company has got you know cheese and olive oil and vegetables and all that in stock in some go down somewhere so that they can be prepared for the next week's demand that's that's inventory that's something the company owns it's its own asset maybe they have inventory worth 10 lakhs okay uh, so you get the sense uh, and this kind of assets now these are not liquid assets if you want cash from these assets immediately it's going to be very difficult to sell your machinery or your inventory immediately and guess, get cash it's going to take a longer time so that kind of those kinds of assets are typically called non-current assets so you see current assets and non-current assets are the two kinds of assets in a company I just align this trade so you know okay non-current assets and uh, and obviously there are you know more detailed uh, versions of this but for the purpose of this session we'll stick to this level of simplicity so this company's total assets is nothing but the sum of its non-current assets and its current assets all right okay no